Hello Uggies Worldwide, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to look at a question posed by Jack, NI8N, and he has an interesting question that I think a lot of people have run into, uh, which is this, that you can um, tune a radio at low power for lowest SWR, and then it, when you put full power to it you can tweak that antenna adjustment again and actually raise the indicated total power out and he is asking what's going on what's going on is that you should tune for min minimum SWR I usually just tune for minimum reflected power and uh, then go with that what is happening when you are changing the tune you're putting it slightly out of tune okay and there's going to be reflected power now if you um, and so the SWR goes up but it seems like more power is going out because some of the power is coming back into the transceiver a little bit of it is bouncing back so you get the appearance of higher power going forward so what you should do tune for minimum SWR or as the case of what I do with the cross needle um, is just tuned for minimum reflected power and then go with it. Uh, this additional thing of uh, tuning then for max power you're allowing the transceiver to overdrive and send out power that are, is not in band. It's actually creating spurious emissions and that's why you see extra power. That extra power is not going on your signal where you want it you're getting some spurious emissions out of there. So I think that's what's going on here. I would recommend that you take that minimum SWR and go with it. Now one other thing that could be happening here is that there is a nonlinearity in the SWR meter. So it's the needle as the needle goes up and shows its power. It's not exactly on a proper linear or usually their logarithmic scale um, on there and as you see the power go up it's because as you put more power into it um, the SWR should stay steady but sometimes it doesn't this could be due to a nonlinearity in your uh, transceiver if you've got an old tube rig or something like that where um, the impedance changes as the power goes up that can happen, but normally not in modern radios. Uh, you can also be getting um, spurious emissions in there if the transmitter is overdriven, because um, if you fiddle with the controls and put out too much. So go read your instruction manual very carefully on how to set up your transceiver so it does not override. I just did a video recently where I was able to take my old Yesu FT101B up there and actually create splatter. It's an old enough rig that you could actually create splatter. Most of the newer rigs prevent you from creating splatter. This one does not. And we were able to see it on the, um, the oscilloscope and particularly on the spectrum analyzer. So that's what you run the risk of doing. Tune for the best SWR and go with it. Turn up your power and uh, you should be quite contented. Another thing that you can do is talk to another ham who lives relatively nearby who can listen to you go through all of this and then he can tune around and tell you if uh, you're creating splatter of any kind. So I hope that helps answer your question. It's a tough question I know uh, and it seems conceptually that there's something nonlinear going on here. Uh, that the maximum power output is not the same setting as the minimum SWR. It can happen. So there you have it. I hope that's helpful. We do have a giveaway going on right now. We're giving away a uh, uh, Indian build. It's from uh, India as in India. Um, and uh, it's a from hfsigs.com and it is a micro BITX version 6 that has been built. The case is uh, on it. Uh, it's been tested. There was a, uh, a video made about it 
uh, and you can um, take a look at that and see what you think of it. To enter giveaway number three, send a, a postcard, uh, your QSL card, or an envelope with a single sheet of paper in it to Dave Kassler, KE0OG, PO Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. And inside, put your name, call, uh, the giveaway number, which is number three, and uh, your uh, shipping address, where you want it shipped to, and your phone number that I can call if I have any questions. I don't need your uh, email address. Note that when I am done with this giveaway, all of the entries will be, uh, uh, let's see, I think they're going to be shredded. We'll shred them so that uh, it preserves your privacy. I do not give this information to anybody. And there's no charge to you, except for the postage stamp, um, because I will pay the postage to whoever the winner is. It needs to be stateside only because postage rates going out of the country are exorbitant. Uh, so we'll, we'll keep that. Now, the post office these days is going postal. So uh, something's going on there, and uh, they're really slowing down the mail. So please have your entry in. Um, one week prior, and I can't see the calendar. The drawing will be on the 28th, so please have your uh, entry in the mail by the 21st. <clears throat> Note that it needs to be in my hands uh, on the 28th, because we're going to do the drawing. And then the next day, uh, the winner will be shipped out. So postmarks and stuff like that don't matter. I will kind of take a look at post uh, dates, postmark dates, kind of to get a feel of how long the post office is taking. Uh, we're a little bit off the beaten path here in Ridgeway, so please give it at least a week uh, to get here. Every time you do the drawing, I get several entries that are too late, and, and uh, I'm really sorry, but... Oh, well, <laughs> that's that. I'm going to try and do this every month. Uh, I've got so much stuff. I think the next two months I've got a couple antennas that I have tested. And uh, one is from uh, Alpha Delta and the other one is from MFJ. And we'll get those as giveaways. So, there you have it. Until we next meet, 73.